Entrepreneurship is hard, so let's fix that and dive into our hero's journeys. This is Taking Flight, an entrepreneur's journey, and I'm Sarah Torville. Join me as we delve deep into the passions, expertise, and experiences of those already in flight. This show is sponsored by EO Atlanta. Hello and welcome everyone to our EO Atlanta Taking Flight podcast. And um, it's been a busy week and I feel like I'm just, there's still so much I want to accomplish this week and I know it's going to happen. We're going to learn so much with our next guest who um, has a very interesting background. And so this is going to be a very different type of discussion today. I think it's going to take us into an, perhaps an area of food, which I haven't actually had the opportunity to talk about, I think, on this show yet. So this is going to be fun. So um, the person I am speaking to today has been named by the state of Georgia as a 2023 small business rock star. He's a truly sustainable and benevolent small business owner. And though there's nothing small about the huge impact he's making on the local community, the economy, and the environment. President and co-founder of LJ Mushrooms, Howard Burke. Welcome to the show, Howard. Hey, how are you, Sarah? Thanks for having me. I'm really good. Thank you for joining us today. I'm super and... excited to be on this famous podcast. So <laughs> let's get it going. Yes, you said famous. I would love that. Yeah, let's just like guess just like big that work, big that big that up a little bit more. So everyone thinks this is the podcast to be listening and watching. So um okay, and we have to start. I mean, your backdrop looks incredible. Can you just yeah? I mean, can you turn yeah. them and like pick them and like <laughs> yeah, wait. It'd be like virtually like the scratch and sniffs back in the day. So it would be snatch and scratch from mushrooms. Um, so wow. what you're looking at is um, this is one of our greenhouses. So we grow our mushrooms in greenhouses. Um, the average greenhouse size is 130 feet by 30 feet wide. So you're looking at just one row of shiitake mushrooms in harvest. Okay. So what you're seeing behind us is... Um, we use sawdust and compress it together with the shiitake mycelium, mm -hmm. which is a decomposer. Mushrooms are decomposers. So it's going to eat all the nutrients in the log and then start popping out amazing, healthy, organic mushrooms that we have to handpick one at a time. So okay. that row right there in full bloom, right when it when it's pinning and the mushrooms are ready to be picked, it could literally take you one whole day just to do one row. It is intense at times. When you say so one, so like behind you, I look, look like I can see yeah. one row. That's regarded as one row. Yeah. One row. That could yeah. take you all day when yeah. it's totally flush. Um, so we do everything is, by hand, but it's amazing. You know, the greenhouses change just like our environment outside. It can heat up and cool down. Mm -hmm. We don't use any real special technology. We just kind of use Mother Nature. Mm -hmm. um, and then you see our amazing shiitakes behind us. Okay, I want to dig much more into those shiitakes as we go through this call. And for anyone who's listening and cannot see us, you need to get make sure that you check this out on YouTube because it is, I don't think I've ever seen shiitake mushrooms growing out of wood like I can see right now. So um, how interesting. So, well, let, let's kick off, Howard. And, you know, as you, you know, really do want to uncover your story and particularly want to know, like, what did you get right? When you took your first flight into your entrepreneurial journey, what what was that? Oh, I had to take a deep breath, probably like every entrepreneur, because we kind of always look for the bright side on things. Mm -hmm. So I did IT for 17 years. Um, during that 17 years, I started my first entrepreneurial journey uh, with a company called Two Fun Guys. It's another mushroom company that um, we supply you, the home gardener, the home cook, with a mushroom log, which is actually a tree that we cut down and we inoculate. Um, at, you can inoculate your logs at home, or you can take the log already pre-inoculated and grow it in your backyard. So I started this company after I learned about um, Shambly, the city of Shambly near Brookhaven in Atlanta, Georgia, that was starting a farmer's market. And I wanted to go help them start this because I've always had a passion for feeding people, helping out farmers and learning about this. And then okay. at my first business partner there, and one thing led to another and we started Two Fun Guys. And we did not get a lot of things right at the beginning, but we figured them out as we went. Okay. So so you, what did you get right per se? Was it the the business partner you found? Yes. Is, it that, was a, is that the main somebody, point? 
yeah. the main point there is someone that's passionate like you that has the same work ethic that really, yeah. you know, you could balance off of, reflect off of it, and that believes in you. Yeah, a hundred percent. That's so great when you when you find that individual. So, so you be, you went into business together, and that's how you took it forward. Yep. Um, and then from there, four years later, I still have that company, but then I started LIJ Mushrooms with another set of partners that right. wanted to scale up in a different area, okay. um, feeding, you know, commercially growing. Um, so we don't actually grow mushrooms with two fun guys. We allow you at home to grow them. But in LJ Mushrooms, we grow mushrooms to serve to grocery stores, restaurants, home chefs, right. And friends. Right. So, so what do you, I just want to ask you, what do you think you got right then with this newer business? Like how, I mean, cause I always truly believe that, I mean, entrepreneurial, you know, start people have, you know, they, they'll create one business, move on to another. And there's a journey you learn from one as you move into the other. So do you think that first business enabled you to get things right with the second business or did it, did it feel very different? It felt different, but I still use some of those life lessons mm-hmm. so to speak, from it. But for me, it really goes back to being real simple and having a foundation of people believing in you, giving you the opportunity. Like I never thought, you know, I've always thought about doing something different, but then I had people that really helped push me and believed in me and helped me give me the tools where I lack them to help me get there. Right. Also, within industries, people would always give me a connection, which I found out through two fun guys is that when you're trying to get a new account, you get a lot of no's or nobody responds to you. Yeah. Once you have a name, then you could work your magic. So yeah. with that, that is my biggest takeaway is answer emails, no matter who you are, where you are or whatever. And also if you have a friend in the business or that you could pass the name on, pass mm-hmm. the name on and then let them fight the good fight, right? You're not promising him anything, but you're promising a name that might respond to you where sometimes yeah. you just get a inbox or nothing. And yeah. that's, the biggest takeaway is just keep looking for somebody to answer the door. Okay. And I love that. I think when I first met you, Howard, and this just probably shows the individual that you are and the learnings that you've made, but we met, I believe, when EO Brad Stevens offered that opportunity where you could go and there's an email intro and you kind of just, they pull two people together, don't they? Yep. Um, but many times I also know some people just don't bother. You know, it's there's... It's like, oh, you know, might look at the description and think I've got nothing in common. But you and I had nothing in common with each other. But we got on the phone and, you know, we established a relationship. And I had no idea that actually you could even grow mushrooms up in North Georgia because being British means I'm a little bit naive about what is around me. Uh, trying to get better at that. Um, but we did. We, we, stroke, we strike a connection and then we've seen each other since. And I think it's great, isn't it? It just it opens those doors and who knows where that goes. Yeah. And that's kind of one of the interesting thing. Exactly right. And I'm very thankful that you responded to the email about that because then I got to meet somebody new and being an entrepreneur, no matter what your business is, if they're not in the same vertical, you still, at least I personally learn something all the time from whoever I speak to. I can take a tidbit away and put that in my pocket and figure out how to apply it in the mushroom industry or with an employee or with a team or an event. So for me, time is special and that what we do with our time if we can gain knowledge during that then that's a huge win for everybody yeah i 100 percent agree with you so you've mentioned obviously that there's been some important people who believed in you um so maybe you want to elaborate on that because i'd love to know like who are or were your co-pilots on your journey well um i just got married uh, about two years ago. So my wife, Tiffany, she always believed in me and uh, Mm -hmm. she always pushed me, which was great. Having a support system is, especially going into the mushroom business, it's a, you know, there's big giant conglomerates that, you know, run the food world. And for you to think you have a chance to make, you know, a dent in that, you know, people think might be daunting, but she believed in me. I know we could do it. So that my business partners, Megan, Kai, and Mr. Lee and Amanda, they they believe in my calculated madness <laughs> and uh like very forward thinking. And it is such a great feeling to allow to have the freedom to try to do things in business where people would usually say no. And, right. and that allows you to do anything and everything. One of the things I have in my house with my daughter is you know, they're in college now. One just graduated. One's about to be a senior, but I had a sign above their bedroom door. It says, be you, right? 
fucking big. Especially yeah. now, you could do any job you want. You yes. could have any career. So it's amazing what you can do as long as you have a belief and yeah. partners that, you know, help you push to reach those goals. I couldn't have said that any better. I think that's wonderful. I think it's great that you're delivering that down to your daughters too. Uh, I have two daughters and it's, we were just, I was talking this morning about, um, you know, how easy it is when they go through those middle school years. I know you're past that and so am I, but it, that confidence does get knocked out of them. And so we building that and putting positive affirmations like that in front of them, you know, that where they, and I have the same, I remember when my daughter was doing her SATs, I I wrote something saying, believe in yourself. And she just carried it around with her everywhere because it's so easy to not believe in yourself. And when you do believe in yourself, like you say, look what you can do. You're growing mushrooms in North Georgia. And I believe we're going to find out you're selling them at a pretty significant level. So isn't that amazing? It's it's great. And we have yeah. some to go. It's so cool. <laughs> it's so cool. So, okay, this is so exciting. So what is a challenge Howard, that you and your team have had to solve recently? Um, our biggest challenge is to keep expanding, to find more avenues to sell our mushrooms. Okay. Getting into, you know, currently we're in Whole Foods in the South, so it's like 48 plus stores. We have a yeah. bunch of restaurants. We grow about 5,000 pounds a week of mushrooms, which is a lot of baskets. Um, but getting someone to answer the door, let's say at Craig or Publix, all right. these places. And from our point of view, we see that they have a current mushroom supplier, and, you know, but it wouldn't be as fresh and as good as yeah. our mushrooms. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a change for them. People have to realize that change is good. Yeah. And the reason some people don't change is because they know that their current providers are doing what they need. Yeah. You can have a new provider that does something better. That's even going to be even better for you and your company, be fresher, last longer, and mm -hmm. for the people that they feed. Yeah. So our biggest challenge recently is to find more areas to distribute mushrooms to. Yeah. Yeah. How do you, uh, I can't even imagine how you go about convincing. How do you do that? Like you say that, because there's incumbents everywhere. Yeah. So, so it, there's so many other pieces with that. You know, everybody wants to make sure you have the right insurance. You know, we're certified organic. We have the highest food safety and primus certification. Um, but one of the challenges with growing something fresh is you have a limited shelf life. So the time is always ticking from the time you harvest till the time it goes bad. So as you build up your supply, you have, always have to have an avenue for it. Um, and then you also have to have a way to get your product somewhere being refrigerated. So there's a lot of challenge logistically that's yeah. we're looking about um, to try to get down to Florida at some places where it's hard to get to at yeah. a reasonable price. So right now it's distribution and finding, you know, more outlets to sell at yeah. a bigger volume. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that, that sounds like a big challenge. Can you give me an example of how you think you're solving that challenge? Like, what are you doing to try and overcome that? Um, I'm actually going to my first food show. Okay. So before I got into um, the food world, I really didn't know much about it. Um, I knew a little bit about it, but kind of did this thing backwards. We just kind of just jumped in and figured it out as we went. Yeah. Where some people would have explored like the fancy food show or Southeast Produce Council, which I'm going to in September, mm -hmm. um, as as just a, a person walking around to find out the following year, do we go and set up a booth? Yeah. I've heard that's pretty good to get in front of the buyers there. So I'm really excited to see how that's going to change things. Um, and right now, it's just a matter of just finding more connections, just knocking on doors, dropping off samples. Yeah, uh, samples. Yeah. Showing them that we have a proven history. Yeah. Um, you know, even in LJ, we have Ingalls Supermarket. And right. you want to go to them, but they send you to corporate. Um, right. In most places, you could just come in and start setting up an account, you know, once you have the right paperwork. So it's been a little challenge. So we're trying to work through all those pieces and tell them why, why us? Why should yeah. you ask over your current people? Yeah. Uh, and that's the story we lay out. It's about our employees, the things we're doing at the farm. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our young men and women uh, went to Gilmer High School. Right. And in North Georgia, we have chicken houses, apple houses. And not much else. Right. So we're really trying to show these young men and women that they can make a living 
working on a mushroom farm, yeah. selling mushrooms, being a leader. So we're trying to make a difference just within our people. And that's part of our story. Mm -hmm. We go to sell, that it's not just right. a mushroom. There's so much yeah. more. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, like, and I'm sure this is logistically challenging, but getting getting these buyers to come to and see see what you're doing. I mean, surely that must be a bit of a game changer if you can make that happen. Yeah, I guess it is in a sense. But, you know, I think people want to get out of the city and get to the mountains, um, which is we're seeing that a little bit more and more. Um, you know, we just got a chef from a big uh, hotel chain here in Atlanta that wants to come check out the farm and might wanting to supply Right. Um, a couple new restaurants near the uh, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Yeah. Um, so getting up there to see actually what we do is really the game changer. You know, once we had Whole Foods on the farm, they saw what we did. We have open door policy. You could come see everything. They yeah. really understood who we are, what we're about. And that's why we teamed up together. Yeah. And surely having a name like Whole Foods, do they allow you to promote that? Yes. That's great. Yep. So yeah. it's. It works great with them. Yeah, that's really, really good. Okay, that's exciting. Okay, so is there, as with many entrepreneurs, there's a book, there's many books that we read to help us. But is there a kind of a go-to book for you, Howard, that you've you've used or you utilize, which has really been helpful? Um, so in the book area, it's kind of interesting for me is, I'm going to start with two books. Okay. One that really stuck with me is when I was a young boy, mm -hmm. my mom, I might have been seven or eight years old. My mom created a book and it was about a giraffe and it was my name backwards. It was Drore the Giraffe. And she created this book back in probably 1980 or 81. And it told about this little giraffe going around, wow. uh, doing what he can and, you know, just believing in you. And that has stuck with me. Wow. But in my adult world, um, I really love Paul Stamets. He's a godfather of mushrooms. Okay. And his book, Mycelium Running. Myce is, mycelium? Yep. Okay. Running. So that is like your seed of mushrooms. So mycelium, okay. if you're in your backyard doing um, yard work, can you pick yeah. up a stick, you look underneath and you see some white hyphae? Yeah. That's some other type of fungus. Um, so that's kind of how we have, you know, mushrooms. If you walk in the woods, you don't see trees piled up to the sky, right? Yeah. Because some other decomposers are getting in there. So some other mushroom or mycelium is breaking it down to make our soil and earth fertile so that we can grow amazing crops to feed everybody here. Okay. So it's just mycelium is the seed. There's so many different types of mushrooms, but mm -hmm. that book is really inspirational and kind of just like the Bible. Okay. So that's the Bible for mushroom farmers, is it? One yeah. of them, yeah. It's one his, like one of his early books, and it's like everybody's go to. Okay, so if we have any people who want to be potential mushroom farmers, remind me of the, the author of that book, Paul Stamets. Paul Stamens. Okay, he's got tons of things out there. He's actually helping figure out how to fix the bees. Um, he's oh, okay. created a correlation with bees and mycelium, um, which is helping save the bees. And this book, Mycelium Running, is an amazing book. Yeah, that's not, I love the title just alone. Uh, and it's ever so weird. I have to just share with you because you talk about mushrooms and I don't know too much about mushrooms. I've always been I was told to avoid, obviously, mushrooms growing on the lawn. But we had a lawn issue last week. And so the gardener came along and put all this extra peat. And now we have mushrooms growing everywhere. And I'm like, why does why does that happen? So what makes a mushroom grow in the first place? Is, you, out of interest, is there just like one simple reason? Is it is it to do with it being wet? Yep. So yeah, okay. mushrooms are usually 92% moisture. Yeah, yeah. So since um, in Atlanta, the weather has been cool during night and warm during yeah. the days. And if you mix in rain during that, that's like the perfect yeah. sequence. They have to have a trigger to make them start fruiting, right. which start coming out. So the mycelium's always been in your backyard, mm -hmm. but now you added a warm day, a cool night and some rain. And then right. instantly it's showing you magic. Right. So they say there's bold mushroom hunters and there's old mushroom hunters, but there's no bold, old mushroom hunters. So you have to make sure you know what you eat because <laughs> you don't want to. Yeah. You know, I get quite ill, maybe. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Gosh, so much to learn about mushrooms. So, and, um, and I think that, I mean, are they, aren't they like regarded as like the new cauliflower? Like they're just they're really becoming so popular again. Yeah. It's, um, 
it's everywhere you go, which is yeah. good for us. It's perfect timing. Um, yeah. At the farm, we're about to open up our farm store um, right. and start proper tours. So people can still come to the farm and buy mushrooms. But right. um, we just had a 5K at the farm about a month ago. We had 300 right. people there. Um, but our, we just got approved for our agritourism signs. So as you go around the state of Georgia, you see like signs on the road that say this vineyard, that vineyard, yeah. or petting yeah. zoo. So we just got ours line. approved. Yes. Um, so now we're just waiting for it to, uh, for the signs. Yeah. So it's super exciting for that. Um, yeah. Well, and now, because now it becomes a bit of an attraction, doesn't it? It's like, yep. yeah. We get four signs once the D DO2 approved them. So we're ready to go and uh, okay. it's going to be super exciting. And so do you super... accommodate people just kind of coming off? The road and just coming in that that's all good is it you don't have to make yeah. an appointment so, or no for the store hours which we're updating as we find employees to come you know work yeah. at the store we're adjusting and then as we do tours um tours will be um on the website where you could sign up we're finalizing that right now right now right okay great very interesting i'm, I'm excited for you so um well i just would love to know like tell me a little bit about your journey howard your mother obviously sounds an interesting woman she wrote this book which sounds great I love the fact that she named it after you backwards as well so um but like what were the some key milestones for you do you think before you you know what what led you into becoming an entrepreneur do you think um I think it's just drive for me I, I was really a people say nine to five you know I did IT for 17 years and um you know it was great knowledge that I learned but just so much wasted time in those meetings that just went on and on that you really didn't have to spend that much time in here. Other people talk where you could be out solving solutions. Yeah. And I really wanted to hold myself and my family's future in my hands because I believed in myself and what we could do differently for not just us as a family, but other families. So always, you know, my mom, we had sunflowers growing up in Ohio um to you know my dad was a buyer at different stores you know right um, sporting goods buyer so just learned kind of that hustle at the time of just you know buying selling in a sense which taught me that okay you could do other things and i've never really thought just like a normal person i guess would say i've always had random thoughts and beliefs in doing something different mm -hmm. um, and then um you know, just one thing led to another and, you know, here we are today. Yeah, that's amazing. So, but, so your father was always in the buying business. So was that helpful to you, do you think, and what you're doing now? Yeah, to see him um, buying different products or hearing of an issue or they bought too much Christmas paper, you know, for yeah. the stores or this and that. So as I was younger and hearing those things that, you know, start, I guess, imprinting more ideas on different things, you know, how can I be selling to this company or how can yeah. I be doing this or have that product? And yeah. then start seeing other entrepreneurs, you know, start different companies. Like I want to take that risk. I want to take that calculated risk and do it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's great. And then your mother writing a book, was that just a, a, just a passion top project for her or was she an author? No, she was just crafty. She always so, okay. um, always making cakes at home. So nice. those type of things. So it's just one of the things she did when she was younger and mm -hmm. got a book stuck with me and I wish I had it, but I, you know, we got lost years ago. Oh, that's a shame, but you have the memory of it, which is oh, yeah. so, so important. So, so what do you think is what excites you right now about your future flight? Where do you feel the you or the business is heading? Well, we are doing some some really cool stuff at LJ Mushrooms. Um, we're partnering partnering with Kennesaw State University and their okay. mycology division. Uh, we just got our forty foot smart container delivered to the farm yesterday. It's part okay. of a grant that they just did. So this forty foot container can grow twenty six types of mushrooms in there via this computer system. That if we're growing lion's mane, it will optimize growth inside the growing container so that we can have a bigger production, a more reliable production, um, a steadier production. So it's going to be a game changer because right now we don't have all the tools we need to, to really dial in temperature wise. Right. This container is really going to take us to the next level with having more products. We could diversify in what we offer. Gosh, uh, okay. We can have a better timing of what we grow because sometimes now we'll put a log out and a log out in the oyster house and 
one will grow and one won't grow. Right. But in a container now, everything should be growing because it's optimized just like your front yard. When Mother Nature says it's time to grow, they've now calculated that, wrote a software program for that to be doing that within this controlled environment. Also, at the same time, we started to make our own oyster logs at the farm. Um, and we're starting to use all this agriculture waste that's sitting on these Georgia farms. Mm -hmm. Using cotton gin trash, cotton hull seeds, peanut shells, corn husk. So we're using all this waste material that's just sitting there, um, not doing anything. So we're right. able to give a small fee to some of the farmers. A lot of it's free. And we're working with KSU to help us make a new recipe to make that ag waste into a fruiting mushroom product which is really Gosh. cool it's gonna be a game changer it's really gonna piss off all the big yeah, mushroom there's... companies yeah <laughs> because Two massive game changers yeah it's we've been working on this for a while um our container was delayed for about six months due to staffing but it showed up yesterday and i was so pumped up to get growing all types of different things it's it's amazing and then down the line, we hope that we can supply other people with grow containers. Okay. Uh, I could see a vision of having a grow container in a giant hotel with the glass on it when people come into the main thing that, you know, a lot of hotels are now food centric. So you can see all the mushrooms growing in this food container. The yeah. chefs go in there and pick it. Um, people that are in food deserts or whatever they call that now that yeah. they can have this container run on a um, solar panel. Um, have Wi-Fi connection and grow amazing food for the neighborhood. So it's going to be a game changer as we go forward with this. So, yeah, when you say container, how big are we talking? A normal shipping container. So eight okay. by eight by 40. Okay. So, but yeah, think about those when, when I know when I moved from London to here, we had to ship all our furniture. So you're talking about that kind of size, a 40 yep. foot container. What you see on the freeway. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. That's a big container. Okay. So you're going to, but again, I mean, in time, that's, do you see yourself filling that up and then getting more containers? And so you're able to manage the, in, the environment inside the container. Yeah. So what we're, we're doing, we've been doing studies with Cornell University on log production um, and via partnership with Kennesaw State University. So our current greenhouses now are 130 by 30 on average. So we've done a study with, K, um, with Cornell University tracking the whole life cycle of a mushroom log before it decomposes and we take it up to the compost area. So we've done all of our numbers on that. We'll compare that same type of growth for the container, and then we'll figure out which one is the best way economically, uh, which one produces more. And we'll do that going forward as we expand past the 10 houses that we have. Right. And, and Kennesaw State, why, why them? Is, I, mean, what, I mean, I know they're probably, I mean, they're, they're fairly local to an extent, but what is it that they're do they have a very good agricultural program? They have a great mycology program. Mycology, um, okay. and we built a friendship up with uh, Dr. Chris and Dr. Kyle. Um, and then one thing led to another that we were part of this grant to get one of the four containers this is the second one. Um, and then once that grants up, they can't produce these containers anymore at the university. So we're trying to woo them to the farm so we could start another business Micrologic and LJ right. much to do the smart containers and then supply them from there. Right. It was just one of those things of being in the right time at the right place mm -hmm. and building a relationship with them. And, you know, we've offered our farm up to UGA, Georgia Tech, and KSU to be field study for any time they have students that, you know, want to come do different projects. Um, we're working on trying to get interns from KSU to help make the logs. Mm -hmm. So we have an open door for anybody to come learn. Yeah. Um, it calls sometimes from students that are working with Apple um, to try to take our old spent logs to make packaging for them. Right. So to supply that to the universities, we give back a good amount on anything we can. We believe in that. That's good. Yeah. Um, so it's all part of how we build our mushroom network. Right. And I don't, know, I don't think I've asked you this yet or you haven't said it, but like, why mushrooms? Well, I've always like growing mushrooms ever since I was little. I like growing things, but really mushrooms were cool because I did it in phone books and cardboard. And usually when I had a garden, I end up having a lot of shade. So nothing would grow except for my mushroom logs. <laughs> so by mushroom. default. <laughs> yeah, by default, the mushrooms came up. Yes, yeah, so it yeah. came up. And it's amazing where we're going with mushrooms in all areas. 
I mean, soldiers um, that have PTSD, people have depression, are now using psilocybin, which is still a class one in Georgia. You go straight to jail. Yeah. But it's making these soldiers be a father, be a son, be a daughter, be a mom with something Mother Nature grows that is providing them hope. And Yale, um, John Hopkins, Harvard, they're all doing these amazing studies on, on psilocybin, which is another type of mushroom to help them fix the brain. Um, and it's just amazing the results that's happening. So it's just where Mother Nature really provides us with everything we need. Mm -hmm. But right now, in this case, in the state of Georgia, it's illegal. But once it becomes legal, more and more people will be able to be helped with this medicine. Yeah, which is wonderful, which is great. So, okay, so mushrooms, they just happen to, yeah, they, you're right, they grow everywhere and you can't control them. So, um, but I just think it's amazing how, again, this is a true example of an entrepreneur of seeing something and thinking like, how do I, how do I leverage that? How do I control my future? How do I turn these mushrooms into something else? And it's just very clever. It sounds like you've got so many prongs of opportunity going on and I'm very excited for you. Yeah, um, we have so much more. We're just really trying to do one taste, but at a time. If when people say, can I just buy one mushroom? I'm like, of course you can. Yeah. Just want a little piece of the pie. And if yeah. everybody has part of the pie, they'll be invested in changing. And yeah. we're all trying to work with Gilmer County and their ag department at the high school to introduce um, curriculum um, for mycology. Because right now they have in the ag department at the high school, they have classes on poultry, the apple houses. And now we're trying to set up something with mycology so that there could be another avenue for these students at the high school to, you know, since it's in their backyard to come look at and learn about. Right. No, it's very good. So if I was to ask you this, what, what problem do you believe you solve? Like, like what is your impact on this? I mean, obviously you talked about the impact. I love the environmental impact and the giving back pieces. Maybe, maybe it's that, but where's, how would you summarize like the problem you solve and how you, how you give back? So one we're solving is that we're providing real mushrooms, not the slimy stuff your mama and your daddy gave you growing up. Right. Like we're giving you something that has a lot of protein, a meat replacement, something that's fresh. By buying one mushroom helps support our local economy, right? We're allowed to employ um, the young men and women there so they don't have to go work somewhere else that might not be as amazing as our place. One of our employees and his family just bought a house, right? It's been four years and they built up enough and saved up to buy a house, which is amazing. It's a great win. So our impact is really providing healthy food for people, teaching them that it's not their mama's slimy mushroom, <laughs> showing them how to cook it differently. Um, and then getting our chefs, which is one of our big things, like getting our name on the menu, yeah. making people aware about the farm um, so that they can learn about where food is grown from. It just yeah. doesn't come from the sky or no. the truck. Yeah process of manual labor to get there so we really believe like a one piece at a time leads to the next one and then whoever has that mushroom might have a grocery store or a big chain and you know want to go into you know be partners with us mm -hmm. yeah that's great that's a lot of impact that you are creating it's 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 wonderful i'm so glad you're part of eo as well i'm sure there's a really great network for you hopefully to really leverage and um and get the name out there and get people thinking about like you say because there's so many great restaurants just even in atlanta alone so many great chefs um a great re we're, we're building a very great reputation i believe for wonderful food um you know in our state so huge opportunity yeah one of our chefs um chef terry from the dare and the dove indicator just won the james beard award which is amazing okay. yeah so we serve to like 30 local restaurant places here in Atlanta. We try to get on the best men menus from Nobu to Arnett's Chop Shop to even like ramen station, salary men all over the place. Right. Um, so we just really personally like to deliver to those places to build up that so we can have an event with them. Um, we do stuff at the Botanical Gardens for event. And we'd love to bring a chef or two and highlight them and show them how they make us look better, kind yeah. of shine us up and, you know, put makeup on us and look good. <laughs> exactly. That's wonderful. So if you were to do this all over again, would you do it all over again? I would. Um, but one of the things I'm trying to learn now is how to like raise money for the next steps, right? Yeah. This is all new to me. So 
um, working with some mentors to help learn how to go to that next step. People in EO are really good at raising money. Yeah. It's a skill. And I'm trying to learn that skill. EO has okay. provided me ample opportunities, great knowledge within my forum group. Um, and also just overall of just hearing people talk experience, but I would do it a hundred percent over again. I would have done it sooner. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, that's the next piece. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I hear that quite a bit. I would have done it sooner. Um, which says a lot because we all know exactly. how painful. We're super excited about that. Yeah. No, I was saying it says a lot when people say I would have done it all again, but I would have done it sooner. Because when you think about how hard it is to be an entrepreneur, but we're actually saying, hey, I would have extended the pain even even longer. It just shows. It just shows that actually the outcomes and I think being able to control your destiny is just it just means everything. Yeah, we're super excited for this next chapter. It's really going to be a game changer with us having this container, making mm -hmm. our logs and everything's about to happen the second half of this year. Yeah, definitely. So when you're not growing mushrooms, um, what else do you do, Howard? What do you do for fun? Um, I like to spend time with my family, my girls. Um, I like to go to Atlanta United Games. Okay. Town. I've been spending majority of my time I, sometimes I'm in Atlanta, sometimes up in LJ. I don't really know where I am all the time, right. but I really, really love North Georgia. I spend a lot of time up there at some friends' yeah. vineyards or helping them out. Yeah, uh, I dilly dally at the farm, you know, just hiking, walking, seeing waterfalls, just mm -hmm. being outside in nature is yeah. my, that's my jam. Okay. That's your jam. I love that. All righty. So where can people connect with you? What's the best place? Uh, you can find me at any, on all of our social media is just LJ mushrooms, um, E L L I J A Y mushrooms with an S, mm -hmm. um, you know, the Instagram, Facebook, mm -hmm. um, and our website, LJ mushrooms.com. Yeah. Um, so you could find me there, uh, okay. or people know how to find That's them. Good. Man. And your website is beautiful. Thank you. We're working on it. We're about to add a new recipe site. Okay. Um, so we have some okay. more tweaking to do. It's just a matter of time. My biggest challenge is to sit down like this and yes. have time because mushrooms don't sleep. So you have to harvest seven days yeah. a week. So it's yeah. something we should realize when we got into the business that there's no days off. There's no days off. Yeah, that, that can be challenging. Or well, you have to have a good team. Yes, you're right. Definitely need that. Well, thank you so much, Howard, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. This was awesome. It was awesome. I yeah, it was. There's so much to talk about with you. I love it. And um, come up and visit. I know. I, I was just thinking we need to do. Uh, we doesn't doesn't have to be an EO event, but I do need to come and visit. That's definitely something I will do. And actually, I could bring my daughter with me. She would love to see that. We actually um, have had a couple of EO forums when they do their mini retreat up in Blue Ridge. That they come right. by the farm and the yeah. vineyard, Rue Mountain Vineyards, about to open up our neighbors and and friends. Okay. And, Go next door after you have mushroom visit, yeah. some wine, and yeah, it's a great time out there. It's a good getaway. So Blue Mountain Vineyards, you said, is about oh, to open Rue. up. R -O -A. Yeah, Rue Mountain Vineyards. It's okay. uh, the most Rue. amazing one up there. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying that's just about to open or it's already just, open? Okay, Just about to. Just about. Okay, Rue Mountain Vineyards. Okay, another place to go. Oh, my gosh. Partners kind of us. They're right next to us, so we're, we butt up to each other, and yeah. we've got some cool mushroom events coming up, and uh, a lot of fun together. Very cool. Okay. I need to get on your list then, your mailing list to figure out when those events are coming up. So, well, thank you very much. And thank you to our guests. Um, if you learned something today, you laugh, maybe we inspired you. Maybe you're just going to go out tonight and go get some amazing LJ mushrooms and make something incredible. Share it with us. Let us know. So, um, but yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Howard. And I look thank forward you. to seeing everyone next time. Thank Take you, Sarah. Care. And so that wraps up another episode. Thank you for joining. For show notes and other episodes, visit us at takingflight.live. For more information about EO Atlanta, visit eoatlanta.org. Special thanks to the following sponsors.